Uh oh, let's do this. I'm feeling it today, so I gotta record a second one. Talking to you guys about resilience got me pumped up. Another thing that's fueling my fire is that, like like the rest of you good Americans or those who's are those who are across the seas from me, I got issues with those who's with those who are above me. They telling me to do one thing, get mad when another thing don't happen. They want they their cake and eat it too. So I'm I'm, few, I'm on fire today. I'm feeling it. I'm Marcus Thompson for Boss Life. Another vlog, a daily vlog for you boys. This is probably gonna be the second one in one day. So it's two in one day, and it, it's a real blessing to be able to do it with this type of energy. When you have your own thing when you're working toward a goal and a dream you just get this this energy that that you just want to go out and conquer the world i feel like i want to go to the argonian forest in, in france may 14th 1918 world war one and stand next to henry williams today on this on this issue I want to talk about surviving the night. Y'all might be like, oh, he's talking about black African American history. No, man, I'm talking about resilience. I'm talking about surviving the night. When, when the German insurgents are up on you, let's take it back. Because, you know, your troubles didn't start there. Your, your troubles, if you're hearing William started back in Harlem, New York, when you were young. You, you know, you're 15 years old and you moved from Kentucky or was it Kansas? One of the two from the Midwest to the Northeast of New York just to make ends meet, just to, you know, get you some paper in your pocket. And you signed to the U.S. Army at an underage. It was like 16, 17 when you signed up. A little young troublemaker who's used to hanging out with all the pimps and stuff, with all the wrong crowd. You're stabbing people while you're young. Cause you don't know no better and here you are you're, you're facing racism in an in, in American army over here in America but yet you still put on your uniform to, to go fight the, the good fight against the Nazis on, on, on their first attempt to try to conquer Europe and, and, and there's those out there who said you're not good enough to be wearing that uniform so we ain't gonna even allow you to fight in this war, no matter how bad you want to. So we gonna loan you out as a cook, as a shoe shiner to the French. And I'm gonna tell the French to treat you like dirt, to kick rocks in your eyes. But no, they don't do that. Because when you and your, your boys, the Harlem Hellfighters as many like to call you, Y'all go over there, that infantry, y'all become your own infantry over there, really, because Americans didn't want y'all, y'all throwaways, but the French love y'all, y'all, y'all bond. And then there's that one night, that one spooky night, some, some real killing going on. You, you got to watch yourself, you know, you might fall into a hole where there's a dead horse been eaten by rats. And you don't want the rats to nibble on you, mistaking you as that dead horse. You hiding by a corpse. You know, there's a hole in the gate. And if you go through that gate, you're going to get mowed down by a German machine gun. Because, you know, they got the best of the best. They engineer nothing but killing machines over there. And going over there is a suicide mission. So you just wait the night out. You're trying to wait the night out, but you can't. Because the Nazi insurgents are on you. They, they coming through that little gate. You can't go through because of their machine guns. But they damn sure can. And they damn sure did. And here you are. You're getting shot. You're getting stabbed. You're getting punched. All you got is an empty rifle and a vignette on the end of it. And you're fighting. And you're fighting. Your homeboy over here, he's sustaining the same damn wounds and you killing one nazi after another nazi and they just coming in waves they coming in droves you don't know when it's gonna stop this not even your hometown it's cold 
well, it's May, so yeah, it's, it's France. It's cold. You know, your feet are damn near frozen. You in the middle of somewhere that you don't know. Fighting Lord knows who. Evil on that other side. All you want to do is survive the night. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what Henry Williams did. He returned with 21 wounds on him. And he suffered a lot of those wounds trying to save his fellow man. Trying to pull him off this, this, this field of death. This killing field, as some of you would like to call it, in World War I in France. Fighting for a country that doesn't love him with a country that doesn't even know him. Think about that. Think about that type of resilience. That, that type of opposition that he had to face in those days. He, he's not looking for the end game. He's just looking to survive. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what you have to have. The Battle of Henry. Look it up. Check this dude out. He was a bad mother. Not because it's just American history or black American history, because he's just a flat out bad ass. And the French loved him. The French awarded him before his own American people did. Think about that. Now, apply it to your life. Think about your situations. Every situation that you're having, a lot of times, it's probably a money issue. Somebody's attempting to extract money from you. That's what a lot of our problems, especially here in America, with cap, with with, uh, with, with, with such a capital, you know, uh, economic system. A lot of our issues are never a humanitarian thing. A lot of our issues is a monetary issue. So if that's your biggest opposition at the moment, then there is no reason why you shouldn't fight. There is no reason why you should lay down and cry about it. Because money will return in your life if you're doing the right things. It's not a dire situation. It's not fatal. It's not a life or death. You're not, ain't nobody gonna come to your house and shoot you dead because you owe money unless you're dealing with some kind of street hooligan. But hell, if that's your, if that's your life, then I tell you, you need to start making some changes in your life, big time, real quick. But if you're nine to five average Joe, like myself, and you're dealing with bosses who are asking for more than what you can give. They're, they're asking you to, to deliver their dreams and then some. That's nothing. Been out of a job, nothing. Yeah, I said it. Being without a job is nothing because you can always go get another job. It might be of a lesser uh, job, but nonetheless, you can go get another job. Better yet, how about this for a thought? Once you become so boss life, you say fuck a job, excuse my language, to heck with, to heck with a job, and you go create a job. You use the time that you are taking to interview for jobs to tell you no, and you go use that time to get your mind right, and you go create a job for yourself. I'm gonna put it to you like this. I get paid Let's just say, hypothetically, let's just say I get paid $20 an hour to do what I do as a mechanic, okay? But the guys that I work for, the company, the division that I work for, charges other divisions $150 a labor hour. Now, mind you, I work for the same company. I work for a warehousing company. I'm the maintenance man. And one division, is charging another division $150 an hour to loan me out to make a situation better. I'm a problem solver. I fix, I fix certain problems as a maintenance man. Now, if you just say 
eight hours a day. You know, it's just a regular eight hour week, average Joe. I did some math yesterday, me and another guy. You know, we did some hours, we added that and some other things and come to find out my company was making hundreds of thousand dollars off my back. You know what I'm saying? And just say I'm uh, on, on, on average, when you open up your company's book to see how much you're worth to them, this guy, he's almost like a financier. He's helping me get trying to get a house. He's telling me this. On average, uh, you, you're worth 10 times more to your company than what they're paying you. So if I'm making $20 an hour, then that means they're making about, what, about $2,000 an hour? Three, almost $300,000 a year or something. It was some kind of crazy astronomical number. And he's like, now imagine you did that for yourself. Think about that. You did it for yourself. You got the skills. You got the know-how. All you got to do is be willing to go out and, and provide your service to somebody. You take all the risk and in return you get all the money. That's something to think about people. And that's what boss life is about, is that type of situation. Controlling as much of your situation as possible, whether it be personal or, or, or professionally. But one thing you got to have on your side is that resilience, just like Henry Williams for the Harlem Hellfighters. Just, a, just some food for thought. And uh, by the way, this might be a new commentary section for me the resilient section where I go over different people in history like Jack Ma of AliExpress how many times he done failed before he found AliExpress and became a billionaire I want to start going over billionaire millionaires people who show resilience and make it because there's a lot of people throughout history who has done it and has made it big they bet it on themselves and to me that's the ultimate false life right there so y'all have a wonderful day and this probably be my last posting uh i'm glad to bring a lot of energy today and y'all have a good one